I can't believe that I'm old as I am. I went to bed at 40 and woke up at 60. Like, where does the time go? But there's one thing that we're not creatures of time. We're children of eternity. And once you understand that God has broken the mold of time from us, that we are now locked into the heart of God, which is eternal, there's a lot of excitement as we serve the Lord. It's a great thing to be a child of God and to serve Him with all of our hearts. We are living in the closing moments of this time. And just sharing in the convention yesterday has stirred my heart all the more to the nearness of the return of Jesus Christ. We need to hear it again. We need to have it trumpeted out across the land. We need to hear it in our homes. I was brought up believing Jesus was going to come at any time. And then I realized there was a lot of Bible prophecy that wasn't fulfilled. He couldn't come then, even though I believed at any moment he was going to. And there were times that we thought the rapture took place and we missed it. Running through the house trying to find Mama because we thought we were left behind. We know we shouldn't have been bad that day. And uh, this is the terror you lived in. But, uh, uh, but it's a good way to keep you in tune. Always ready for the coming of the Lord. Watchfulness is so important. But there are things that needed to be fulfilled which are now being fulfilled before our very eyes. Things that have now completed the, the facts of the return for Jesus Christ to come. And one of the great signs is that the gospel should be preached unto all nations of the earth, and then shall they end come. The gospel is being proclaimed in every nation throughout all the earth. There are satellites, seven designated satellites, Christian satellites out there, beaming out 24 hours around the world that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And that he's the king and he's coming back again. It's going out there now. Not everyone has heard. So we must get the gospel out. And may we do our part in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. There's so many things that have been in my spirit. And I said even this morning, Lord, what is it that you want me to share with this precious people? And I have been used of the Lord over the years in the way of awakening and stirring up hearts to pursue God more fervently and to walk more holy before Him in these days in which we live. And the things that are most important to us are not the things of time and of matter. They're here and they're gone. And uh, you look at them and you treasure them as you have them, but you realize it's not forever. The thing that abides forever are those who do the will of the Father. We must be about doing the will of God in our lives. Like never before, there's no time for carelessness. No time to get indifferent. It's time now to be seeking after the face of God. I was reading the account of a young lady that passed away from Ecuador and she uh, was pronounced dead. And uh, when by experience, she said the Lord took her first before he took her to heaven, took her into to hell, and it, it was terrifying. And uh, she said, Lord, no, I can't take any more. And uh, she was crying, and she said, the Lord was weeping with her every moment. And she looked into the face of the master, and she said, what is it, Lord? He said, they didn't have to go here. They're lost. He said, I have given them mercy. They came. And she said, do I have any relatives here, Lord? And uh, the Lord said, yes, your great-grandmother. She said, no, why would she be here? I can't bear that to think she'd be here. And the Lord said she refused to forgive. And that hit me with such force. I went down the line. I said, Lord, I, I forgive everybody. I love everybody, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'm another line. There isn't anybody I don't love. Lord, I love everybody. I forgive everybody. How many know there's enough in our lives that can cause us to go bitter? We've gone through enough in any living. You can only live a short time and somebody does you dirt, somebody hurts you, somebody pains you, and uh, you can hold on to grudge and pain. You know what happens? You would like to see somebody get some poison that hurt you, but the problem is you drink the poison. 
they walk away unscathed and you take the poison in and it destroys your life. We're to walk in love day by day. It doesn't matter what people think or say or do about you or to you. You walk in love and keep the grace of God within your heart. Because the coming of the Lord is at hand. And I, I realized this and I said, Oh God, is all my family, my children, my children's children. Now I've got a great grandson. And I said, let the Spirit of the Lord be upon them. And for two days, I could do nothing but weep. I said, oh God, I can't even bear the thought that there would be one of my offspring who would not enter into the kingdom of God and would be lost into a Christless eternity with the torments where the devil and his angels would be kept. My God, let there be a stirring in my own heart. I wanted to have a family gathering and get them all together. That was my heart's cry. I wanted to look into the face of all my grandchildren and, and said, is it all right to serving God with all your soul, mind, heart, and strength? There is no time to get careless. It's a time to cry out and to get the family together. You may have family members here that know not the Lord. Get desperate with God. You can call on the Lord and beseech God on their behalf. And ask God to pour out of His Spirit upon them and whatever it takes to bring them into the family of God. This thing's real. And I have never had a vision or an experience of hell, but I had the reality of the Word of God. And I looked at a message I, I had years ago and it came up, Voices from Hell. I preached it many years ago and, and I never want to even talk about hell without tears streaming down my face. It is such a dreadful and real place. But I don't know those who are pouring out their heart and persuading men to turn to God. It's an hour now that we need to see God do something in our churches. There are many in our churches sitting there week after week and God said they're not right with me and they're not ready to meet me. They're full of anger, they're full of bitterness, they're full of unforgiveness. They will not stand in my holy presence. Tell them to turn to me and to repent with all their heart that their soul will not be lost. I said, oh my God, what an assignment. What an assignment. There should be all of us so desperate before God. I know that things will happen in our life, but it's up to us what we do with the things that happen to us. We're still told to walk in love. It doesn't matter what people say or do to you. It's how you respond to it, and you respond in love. That's why Jesus said, when though there are those that persecute you, you're to pray for them that persecute you. You're to bless those that despitefully use you. I know it is it's such a, a contrary to our natural thing to thinking to think I'm going to help and bless somebody that hates me. I can get even with them. No, no. God takes care of all that. Vengeance belongs to God. And there's some of you, there's somebody this morning, you've gone through a painful experience when you have been done in. Someone that you trusted and somebody that you had confidence in and they have devastated you. And the Lord said, keep your spirit sweet. Keep your heart full of love and bless them. Seek how you can bless them and it will bring them down and they will repent and they will be restored to you, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know who that's for, but obey God in it and see what God will do. You know, what would happen if you can find a church so full of love that it just oozes out everywhere? Everywhere you go, there's love. You know, I thought I had a lot of love in my heart because I've had to prove it. And I, I said, Lord, and I was preaching one time and being traumatic. And I said, I want to be so full of the love of God that if anybody stabs me, every wound will lose with the love. It sounded great. <laughs> Until somebody stabbed me. I said, I'll get even with you, you critter. <laughs> Lord, I said, where is that oozing of love? And I realized I wasn't as full of love as I thought I was. See, you'll never know how much love you've got until it's tested. And we will be tested in our lives sooner than we think. But we, the love of God must be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The only way you can walk in love and the only way you can love one another is by the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of love within us. Shed abroad within our hearts. 
Seek to love. Do all you can to bestow love. You will come out on top and the favor of God will be upon you and the works of the Lord will be done in you. Hallelujah. That's not my message. But I've got so much here. Hallelujah. Pastor, you'll have to get me back again. How did I do that? <laughs> There is a thing happening right now that we have to be aware of, and I direct your attention to Haggai the prophet. David, did you say it three hours? Was it? <laughs> or three minutes? <laughs> Haggai the prophet, Haggai, Zachari, Zachariah, Malachi, Haggai chapter 2, verse 6. Did you know there's a significance to 26? It's the number. We don't number uh, our alphabet like we, we have 26, but uh, in the Hebrew, uh, the, the Hebrew letters are all numbered. They have a number. And the number for Yahweh, the name of God, is 26. And uh, here's Haggai 2.6. And uh, the significance of 2.6 is this. Let me read it. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. Verse 7, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. There's a whole lot of shaking going on right now. And there's going to be more and more and more as it intensifies. We're talking about as we're coming up. There are earthquakes that are taking place constantly. There's an earthquake in the face of the earth. The bowels of the earth are convulsing. Now some of it explodes, even now to the 9.1 or 9.3, as it happened in Japan. Major size of an earthquake. Others five and six. And we consider seven is pretty strong, but now seven is giving away to eight and to nine. How much more can we take? And yet it's going to intensify. Jesus said that as a woman is with travail, saw the signs of his coming with increased pestilences, earthquakes, wars, and famines. The whole world is now in a war. And someone said, can America take on another war? Get out of Libya. You can't handle it. You're already in two wars that are not over yet. In Afghanistan and Iraq, it continues. And it's now exploding in West Africa. I was planning to go there this spring to Gambia, to West Africa. And now at the Ivory Coast, there are riots there. All over the Arab world, there is riot after riot. And there's an unrest. All began with a young man in Tunisia set himself on fire, exploded, and caused a riot in that nation. Went into Egypt. Now in Libya, it's going to continue. Jordan, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Iran, all being stirred at this hour. God is staging something as he allows things to happen to awaken nations before him. But I see that there needs to be a mighty awakening of the power of God, first in the church. God said, I will reveal my glory unto my people. If there's ever time you need to get close to the heart of God, it is now. No time for indifference or carelessness. Pursue God with all your heart. Know what the Spirit of God is saying to us in this hour. We are not to walk in blindness. These things should not catch us unawares. We should not say, oh, the shock what's going on. No! We are the children of the wisdom. We should know what Israel ought to do, have an understanding of our times. Isn't that what the word of God says? That the sons of Issachar had understanding of the times and knew what Israel ought to do. The church should have the spirit of Issachar upon us. That we have understanding of the times and know what we ought to do in this time. I know a lot of people are panicking. They're saying, we're going to try to find items that are now bunkers uh, by the hundreds now. I, I think maybe over a thousand popping up in the States. I was reading this 
on the internet and that you can put $5,000 down, or later $75,000, to be insured of a place. How many read that? You saw that? At bunkers out in Arizona, Colorado, all these places where you can run for many feet down in the ground and be so solid against any attack, nuclear attack, and all these things that are happening. I'm here to tell you, I'm singing like I've never sung before, Rock of Angels, Clint for me, let me hide myself in thee. There is a rock of Satan for the people of God. Amen. You don't have to run and find bunkers. If you know the times and the seasons and the shakings that go on, then your heart is right before God, and He always brings divine protection unto those that seek after Him. With this great shaking that God's allowing, and it's increasing more and more, it is to awaken, first of all, the church to her purpose in the nations. It is a time that the nations shall begin to cry out unto the Lord. God will shake the seas. And look at the tsunami that hit again in Japan. Not only was the earthquake, the tsunami came. And then the reactors broke down. And now the pollutions that are taking place. That nation, the third powerful nation in the world, economically, has now been crippled. It happened in seconds of time. Nations that boast of its strength and might. And the thing that's going to spare Canada and America is not our military strength or might. It's going to be the people of God that know how to get a hold of God and intercessory prayer. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. But wholly lean on Jesus' name, for on Christ the solid rock I stand. Amen. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. We've got to have our anchor in the Lord. So the Lord said, I'm going to shake all things. Look what he's saying. Once more will I do it. I'm going to shake the heavens. I'm going to shake the earth and the sea. And the dry land. Isn't it amazing that Japan dropped two feet and moved eight feet closer to America. Did you know that? In that shake, all of Japan dropped two feet down and eight feet closer toward the, toward the east. Just by one great earthquake. I looked that I said, you know, if I didn't understand what I was reading, I could hardly believe that God just let us shake. Drop two, move eight feet. The whole earth is off its axis. It's, it's going to get worse and worse as it begins to spin out of control. The only one, and we better sing it, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's the only one that can be in control. And these things are happening right before our eyes as the word of God and the prophets cry out, God will shake all things that can be shaken to let us see the things that remain. What is the purpose of God allowing these things to shake? Is because the things that remain are the things that are eternal. If, it, if it's taken from us, then say, thank God it wasn't eternal anyhow. The only thing that counts are the things that last eternally. And we have to have our anchor in Him. And then note, not only will these things be shaken in the heavens, and look what's happening in the heavens. All of these dramatic events in the heavens and the earth, the sea swelling, the tsunamis, the dry land that has been moved and shifted. God said, I will shake all nations. Now, he's not only going to shake creation, he's going to shake the nations. Until the desire of all nations will come. Who is in the desire of all nations? The Lord Jesus Christ. We have looked to man for systems, for kings, for presidents. To rule, to bring peace and prosperity. God said, I'm going to shake it. I'm going to keep shaking until there's such a desperate cry to the living God. And our desire is for him to come. Whose right it is to rule and to reign. The king is coming. Amen. The king is coming. Amen. Amen. Get ready. The desire should be intensifying within our hearts. Oh, even so, come Lord Jesus. That should be our cry. Come, Lord Jesus, come. I don't know how long we've got before the whole thing totally erupts. But I know I'm confident in this. 
that the Lord is in control of all things. His word is being fulfilled before us. And so it's time to seek the Lord with all of our hearts. And let me just share from Romans chapter 13 the cry that came from the Apostle Paul. In the light of all these things, and if we don't have time to get in all these things, but I'm sure your leadership can continue to share the things that are taking place. Get into the Word of God. You're only going to be as strong as your knowledge of the Word of God. Did you hear me? You're only going to be as strong to face the things of life by the knowledge of the Word of God that dwells within you. Because the Spirit of God can only quicken or make alive truth. And if you don't have it, how can He bring it to your remembrance? How can He strengthen you by the Word if it's not there? Get into the Word. Don't just wait till a Sunday morning. We need some good old-fashioned revival meetings where you come night after night, night after night, morning after morning, where there is an intense, protracted time of seeking God. We give the Lord a little time Sunday morning, so Lord, if you're going to do anything, do it fast, because this is the time of God for you. That's really our thing. We don't say it, but that's really what we work out in our schedule. It used to be the Lord's day. Now it's just the Lord's morning. You can finally, hardly find a place where you can get to a church Sunday night or, or a place of prayer, of intercession. I remember we'd have chairs like this and we'd have them back to back and they'd be on their faces before God, crying out to the Lord and I said, Lord, it's time for old-fashioned Holy Ghost intercession. When they can't do anything but just weep before God, before the porch of the altar. When God invades our lives. I was mentioning yesterday, I remember as a young preacher standing in this, this town of Desiranto, and I was beginning to preach the word of the Lord, and they had the communion prepared before me. All of a sudden, the word of the Lord came up from my lips, and uh, it shocked me, and the Spirit of God intensified, and I, I began to prophesy, don't come near the table of the Lord, your hearts are not right before God. And it, it just is coming, and all of a sudden I heard a thud behind me. And I looked, and the pastor collapsed on the platform, just thud, and went into groaning. I, I looked out among the people, and they were falling off their chairs. And I'm just now, in my early 20s, standing there like, what's going on, Lord? I knew this is a work of God. I'd never seen it like this before. And people were crawling, trying to crawl to the front. The power of God was so great, the fear of God came upon the place. They were crying out, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, Lord, crying out. And they were trying to get to the altar. They couldn't. They just had to do it in their seats all over the place. I stood there. And, and I just remember the Lord said, do not come nigh my table. Your hearts are not clean. Your hands are impure. And, and it was just there. And it was an awesome move of the Spirit of God. Turn that church around. And God gave them a mighty visitation. How many know God wants to pour in the Spirit of the Lord? Yes. But are we ready to have revival? Do we want revival in breath? Yes. yes. Do we want God to show up here in this church? That when people walk in the glory of God will be so great. But there will be a price to pay. You've got a good team who love God. They're sensitive to the Holy Ghost. And I've learned to appreciate your pastor all the more in this. Thank God for that sensitivity. I know my son he has a heart for God. He's gone through enough to make him a greater man. God's going to bring him through with a prophetic battle upon you, my son. And there shall be a boldness and a clarity that when you stand, you will speak as an oracle of God. For the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and the fear of the Lord will be around about you. And you will stand in this might and it shall be greatly confirmed by signs and wonders. Things that you'd only dreamed about shall begin to happen, saith the Lord. For truly, this is a year of transition. This is a year where the Lord shall take you from one place into another, from one circumstance into something more glorious, from bondage into liberty, and boldness will be intensified, and greater work shall be done, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Ready to say, God, it's time for something new to happen in my life. 
Yes, hallelujah. And I, I'm believing for this. I'm, I've just been sharing my heart. This morning. Sorry. Just pouring out what I've been sensing. Uh, what God is wanting to do. And some have said, Lord, I have now lived for you. Let another generation come. The Lord is saying to some older ones here, you are now going to be most effective now in this, your life, in your time. For he has deepened his work in you. He has treasured his riches in you. You have so much more to give. And, and do not think that it's over because God has prepared you for such a time as this. Hallelujah. You may lose a loved one. Past. But God has purpose for you, dear lady. And, and, you know, we have nothing to do with age. I learned one thing. You know, you look in the mirror and say, well, ain't what it used to be. <laughs> But you know, all of a sudden you feel fire. I, I this morning, I began to weep and I said, Oh God, what's all about? Lord, so I've got, I'm doing something today, son. I've got to break you up first because when I break you up, then you flow in a sensitivity that my people will respond because I'm trying to reach the heart of my people. Amen. The Lord has been grieving over his church because the church is not awakened. Right. Awake thou that sleepest was the cry. And I'll conclude with this. In Romans chapter 13. And knowing the time, knowing the time in which we now live, it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, a day of breaking forth upon us. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of the light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. Isn't that something to say that to the church? Not in rioting and in drunkenness, not in chambering and in wantiness, not in strife or in envy. All these things go on in the world, but Paul said it's gotten into the church. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the love thereof. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. There's ever a time we need to put on Christ it's now. It's time to get ready to adorn ourselves for we are the bride of Christ. The bridegroom's coming. He is even at the door. He is ready to come to receive his own. Oh, how the Lord longs to see this great work now within you. You're such precious people to God. And God wants to do an awakening. And for the things shall be so great within you that the place will be too small to contain what God wants to do in this life. <laughs> Your favorite seat will be taken if you don't get here an hour early. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many can handle it? <laughs> so I'll sit on the floor if I have to. Glory to God. But there will be an intensity. I release the intensity of God. The zeal of the Lord shall perform it. What is the zeal of the Lord? The Lord, the zeal of the Lord is God in His face. It's the high intensity of God. And He shall release His glory among the people when the desire of all nations shall come and He shall come into His holy temple. He shall come among His people first of all. And the nation shall cry out unto Him, Come Lord Jesus is our cry. Even so, come Lord Jesus. May this be the cry of your heart. God will take you from where you are now. Even take this old church pastor from where you are and transition you into something greater. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You say, well, we, we've been going through a time. I don't know what, oh, but I know before transition, there's always shake-up. Hallelujah. Amen. God breaks things up, shakes things up. Anytime I've ever a move from one place into another in God, it's gone through devastation. And I said, I don't like the way you do it, Lord. The Lord says, you know, you go my way. Because I have to shake things loose because you had dragged things in. I want you to be free from it into where I'm trying to take you. Come on. Because we, we love things. We hold on to this thing. I like this. We like that. We treasure this. And we, Lord, I'm trying to get you to someplace else. You got all this baggage. I'm going to shake it loose. That you'll only have hands free to be raised up to worship me and feet free to walk in the way that I will guide you and direct you. For God is bringing a transition here in this church. Hear the word of the Lord. Get ready. And he does so. I don't know if 
If you had a shaky, but if you had one, thank God. Say, Lord, thank God it's over with. Look. And the Lord, if it's not over, hurry up and get it over with. Because God wants to take it into a new place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it will be absolutely divine. Because God never transitioned you into something less. He takes you into something greater. He doesn't take you from a, a small thing and leave you there. He takes you from glory to glory to glory to glory into something greater in Him. Hallelujah. How many are ready to let God transition you? Come on, let's stand to our feet. My 30 minutes is over. Son's been watching, I'm sure. Grab the guitar, my dear. Son, hallelujah. Isn't it?